So we already reviewed the QC35s, so why bother with the Series 2? What's so new about them that warrants a Series 2 anyway? Well, for one, these have a new hardware button that lets you activate your favorite assistant. And no, we're not talking about Bixby. We're talking about the Google Assistant. I'm Adam Molina, and this is our review for the QC35's Series 2. Now, it just wouldn't be a tech review without a good old-fashioned unboxing. So when you open the box, you're greeted with this oddly shaped but sturdy carrying case. Opening it up reveals the headphones nicely tucked away inside. It's like Bose is trying to show off just how flexible and ultra packable these are right from the start. Along with the headphones, you'll get a micro USB charging cable and an audio cable. On the inside of the packaging, it tells you to download the Bose Connect Plus app in order to get started. So let's dig into that. When you open up the app, it'll first try and find the headphones and then ask you to swipe them down in order to finish pairing. So it's pretty cool, especially since the process is helped along by a small voice egging you on in your ear, telling you if you're connected or if it's still searching. After you select your language and pick a nickname, like this one, you'll get to the Google Assistant setup, which lets you toggle having your notifications read aloud into your ear along with a dedicated Google Help page specifically for the product. Then you can ask it questions, just like you would if you activated Google on your phone. Except it's not. It's much quicker. So as soon as you press the button, the headphones will start listening to what you have to say, and then you can ask a question or give your command. Normally with headphones that have this functionality, you'd have to hold it down for a second, wait for the beep beep, and then Google or Siri to pop up on your phone, and then you can ask the question. You're left waiting for that verification that the button actually worked. It's instant. Like, as soon as you press the button, the headphones start listening to you. And then you can either ask your question, how are the Knicks doing, or give your command. Remind me at 11.30 a.m. to tell Joe Hindi that I named the headphones after him. The Knicks are in ninth place in the Eastern Conference with no wins and one loss, one game behind the Magic. Your reminder for 11.30 a.m. is ready. Tell Joe Hindi that I named the headphones after him. You're not left waiting for any confirmation beeps or anything like that before you speak to it. Obviously, you do have to wait a second or two for the reply to get back to you after it's been sent to your phone, but that's fine. The whole process is still really quick. You can also just tap the button to have the assistant tell you the time or read you any new notifications, like the ones that I have from all my friends. It's 11.06 a.m. You don't have new notifications right now. Now, the Google Assistant isn't the only new feature with the Series 2. In the Bose Connect Plus app, you can remap the action button on the left ear cup to control the active noise cancelling, which now comes in three different levels, high, low, or completely off. And don't worry, you'll still be able to access the Google Assistant by holding down the multi-function button on the right ear cup for a second, if you choose to do this. So you get the best of both worlds. Now you're probably wondering, well, what if I have an iOS device? And if you do have an iOS device, you too can have the best of both worlds. Kind of. You'll have to download the Google Assistant app on your iPhone in order for the action button to pull it up. And then you can access Siri by holding down the multi-function button. But something tells me that you're not downloading the Google Assistant if you're happy with Siri, but that's another conversation. As far as connection goes, these are just as strong and consistent as the original version of these. I had no problem with connection strength whether my phone was in my pocket or across the room. So extreme range testing aside, these only skipped on me three times in about a week of usage, which isn't bad at all. And that connection strength also applied to calls, and I had no issues here. So if call quality is something that's important to you, these won't let you down. So at this point in the review, you're probably wondering why we spent so much time on the Google Assistant and the connection aspect of these headphones. And that's because when compared to the original Bose QC35s, this button is really the only thing that's different about it. This little action button that controls the assistant or the three levels of active noise canceling is the only significant improvement. Everything else from the sound quality to the build quality is more or less the same. But in case you missed our original review, we'll dig into that now. So design is easy because like we already mentioned, the new action button is the only thing that's different about these in the original QC35s. These are still the same smart looking minimal pair of headphones. They maintain the slim profile of the originals and also the comfort level as well. These are considered one of the most comfortable pairs of headphones on the market, and for good reason. You can wear these for hours without ever feeling like you have to take them off to let your ears breathe. They're also super durable and can be bent and twisted in a bunch of ways, so if you have to really jam them in your bag on your way out the door, you can do so with a clear conscience. But you should still probably use the included carrying case, you know, just in case. 
Besides the action button and multifunction buttons that we already mentioned, you'll also get the volume up and volume down buttons as well as a power switch on the right ear cup. You'll see that these charge via micro USB on the bottom of one ear cup and even have a 3.5 millimeter input on the other, so you can hardwire these to your phone if you still have that option. Battery life also hasn't changed between these and the previous model. You'll still get about 20 hours of constant playback, which is about three or four coast to coast trips in the US. It's not bad. In our testing, we got exactly 15 hours and 46 minutes of playback on about 80%. So unless you're trying to blow your ears off playing these on max volume, you shouldn't have any problems with battery life. So first things first, nothing about the sound quality has changed here. Even though they now have the Google Assistant and Android Oreo now supports LDAC, aptX, and aptX HD codec support for Bluetooth streaming, you won't find any of that here. These only support AAC and SBC, and you need two to tangle with Bluetooth codecs, so when one side doesn't support it, they default back to the standard, which is SBC. SBC is the same as the original, so nothing new here. Now that doesn't mean that these sound bad. The average person will probably find these more than great. But if you consider yourself an audiophile, that's one aspect you're gonna have to suck it up with. Lows are definitely still given preference over everything else, but on the bright side, that weird rattle that used to occur in songs with heavy bass on the first generation is gone. So thankfully they fixed that. That said, these aren't any less bass heavy. Each bass kick in the song We Just Haven't Met Yet by Russ shook my eyes just a little bit when they were on max volume. I'm sure some people will find this great, but I do not. Still, at least the rattling is gone. Mids are just as clean as they've always been with the vocals coming through loud and clear. I was hoping that there'd be just a little more detail in the background instruments of some songs, but it seems to be the same as the previous model, which isn't a bad thing since those sounded fine, but one could always hope. These also do a great job at staying away from harshness in the highs. You won't get some of that same airiness and spatial positioning that you'll notice when listening to open back headphones of a similar price. The hi-hats and cymbals in Billy Joel's Zanzibar sound a little flat and don't really have the exhilarating effect that I know them to have. Oh yeah, and about that active noise cancellation, Bose has always had top of the line ANC, but now we can actually show you just how good that really is. Of course, this isn't scientific, but it should give you a general idea of how these sound when the ANC is turned on. So just like Chris Thomas did in his video explaining isolation, we took a fake head, stuffed a microphone in it, and then recorded pink noise with and without the headphones. Graphing the results and subtracting one from the other gives us this graph. Everything in blue and green was pretty much canceled out, which shows you just how good these are as it nears the 20 decibel line. But we can go even further and show you more or less how these will sound in a few different scenarios. So first is a coffee shop, and it's probably best if you put on headphones here. Second was on a random street here in Portland. And third was in another coffee shop because I'm clearly addicted. So in the end, these are the same headphones as they were before. They're just a little bit better now thanks to the active noise canceling profiles and the addition of the Google Assistant. Now the ANC is still top notch and one of the best you'll get at any price point. And because basically nothing else has changed about these headphones, they're still just as sleek and as comfortable as they were before. Of course, we're always going to wish that sound quality was better, but these are far from the worst sounding pair of Bose headphones I've ever heard. Music sounds fine, and you're not paying for the sound quality really, let's be honest, you're paying for the features. The price tag of $349 will deter a lot of people from buying these, and rightfully so. But let's be real, these are still gonna fly off the shelves. We're giving the Bose QC35 Series 2 headphones an 8.6 out of 10. And that pretty much does it for our review of the QC35 Series 2, thanks for watching. If you wanna know more about any of the other products we review, make sure to check out soundguys.com. But while you're here, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already, and sign up to our newsletter so you can stay up to date with all the newest reviews and audio news here at SoundGuys. Links to all of that down in the description. I'm Adam Molina, I'll see you later.